Wild Pitch is back at it again. Aaron Stephanopoulos here, joined by the voice of Smoky Stadium for a number of years now, Mr. George Ardley. Thank you so much for joining us here today, George. Thanks for having me, Aaron. I really appreciate that. What an honor for you to be here at, you know, at the time of this podcast, 9.30 a.m. Usually it's, uh, we're at, into the evenings when we get right. to hang out for uh, the number of baseball games that we work together with. We're going on, what is it now, four or five years together? I think this is the fifth, didn't Yeah, it? I think I you're think. right. Fifth year now uh, since I've traveled into Tennessee. And, of course, uh, you've been covering Smokies and baseball games for a number of years now. How many years has that been? I started at Bill Meyer Stadium uh, when they were the Knoxville Smokies, of course, in uh, 1998. I answered a one ad. Kind of funny. Uh, Sunday newspaper in Knoxville, it's a big one ad. It wanted public address announcer. Fly Bill Meyer Stadium. I, thought, uh, I was always a Smoky fan, so uh, I applied and, and, and got the job. So that was 1998. And 98, what a what a wonderful year it was for UT sports as well. Huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> sure was. And we're still talking about how it feels like 98. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we need to refresh that feeling quickly. Now, you know, we're talking, of course, about college football. If you don't know, that was the year the Vols won the national championship against Florida State. And, you know, T. Martin, quarterback for the Vols there, not no. Peyton Manning. Nope. So. nope. <laughs> Never even been one. And, you know, George, you're a really big fan, of course, of college sports. Oh, yeah. Um, and something that you had when you were growing up was Leonard's Losers. Is that right? That is correct. And I was a loyal listener to Leonard Costero. He was from Athens, Georgia. Georgia graduate, died in the Wool Bulldog fan. And he came on in Knoxville at 10 o'clock on WIBK every college football Saturday. And that's something that you started listening to when you were a little boy or uh, teenage years? Probably or in or 12, what? 13, 14, uh, that time frame, on up through, because he was on from 58 until 94. My goodness. Yeah. That is, can't do the math right now, almost 40 years or so? He had a uh, over 130 stations when he retired. He was known all, all over the Southeast. And, you know, it's called Leonard's Losers. And what he does is he pretty much gives you a breakdown of the upcoming matchups for the college football week on Saturday and, you know, maybe some action here and there. But he does it a little bit differently, doesn't he? He, he doesn't does. pick the winners. No, he does a real clever monologue, did a real clever monologue and, uh, with, with nicknames of the teams, uh, Florida, the Giant Water Lizards, uh, Tennessee, the Long Rifleman, uh, the uh, – uh, the, the Bulldogs is his home team. Uh, the red, he called them the Red Clay Hounds. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, he had all those uh, names and, and, and combined it away. But at, at the end, he, he would say, Leonard's loser, and give you the team. So it was a unique uh, uh, format that he had and very, very popular. Yeah, so basically he isn't picking the winner. He's picking the loser. So you don't want to hear your favorite team's name at the conclusion of his monologue. Absolutely not. No. Uh -uh. And that's something where, you know, he is from the South, just as you said. He's from the Georgia area, Athens. was it? Athens. He was a World War II veteran. Yeah, he was on uh, a battleship, I think. Uh, he was in the Navy. And then uh, he, he came out. And, and I've looked at some stories about him. They're not, there's not many stories out there, but he, he was quite a character in his own right. I think you have to be, you know, for yeah. uh, Having a successful show like that for nearly 40 years, I'm sure he did a little bits of uh, other things here and there. So One article I read I thought was very interesting. He said when he started in 58, he didn't say, say how many stations he had, but he said, I made about $10 a month. <laughs> he said when I retired in 1994, at the end of my career, he said I made $250,000. So you can see... What, what a success the show was. Now, uh, going into Leonard here, you know, as you said, he's a big Bulldogs fan. And excuse me for not knowing that much. Uh, I'm originally from New Jersey. And right. then uh, over there in southern New Jersey, college football isn't as big as down here. Of course, you know, we're located in East Tennessee. 
Uh, Smoky Stadium is 20 minutes east of Knoxville, home of the University of Tennessee. And college sports is absolutely everything down here. Uh, so Georgia football, was it successful when he was uh, in the heat of uh, it, it, Leonard? Kind of a roller coaster. It's where she had, uh, oh gosh, what, what was the coach's name down there? Escaping me right now, but he was there for years. He just died. Vince Dooley. Mm -hmm. Yes. Vince Dooley was there and had, was very, very successful with the Georgia football program. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, but it was not as successful as maybe like more recent years. Here. No, well, yes, so. they've won two, three state, uh, state national championships. Right. Right. So, no, they're Kirby Smart uh, has done a great job down there. And you coming from a lifelong Vols fan here. Does it hurt you that Georgia is so successful? Or are you happy about the SEC being so competitive in the top I, tier? I, I, I pull for the SEC. I don't care who it is. I'll even pull for Vanderbilt. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if you didn't know about that, Vanderbilt is definitely uh, not the definition of successful when it comes to football. Uh, baseball, on the other hand, has been very, very Different good. Different story. So. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be interesting to see when these other teams come to the SEC, but it's going to play out. Gee whiz, we got Texas. Yeah. Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah. So Oklahoma, you know, at least for when I was growing up, you know, they had a couple successful years in the Big 12. And, you know, Texas won that championship against USC, I think, in 04, yeah. 05. Uh, but Texas has not been really relevant in college sport, college football in a while. Am I correct? Yeah, so, that's true. So that's a shame, but maybe, you know, the revitalization of everything coming into uh, the SEC. So how many teams are going to be in the SEC now, George? I, I, 45? I, I've, lost, I've lost count. <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, I guess the divisions are pretty well laid out as far as who's going to be, you know, in east or west. But uh, And then there's other teams out there, too, that are wanting to come in. I, I, I've read about them. Everyone wants to knock on the door. Yeah, here, so yeah. I, I was always hoping that Clemson, they would kind of be a natural fit for the SEC. But, uh, Do you think it's because uh, Clemson is just so dominant in the ACC? They want to stay over I, there? Yeah, I, I think that's probably – Dabo wants to stay put. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with uh, – with South Carolina, of course, in the SEC. Okay. Now, yeah. you know, it's like maybe they don't want to have that opportunity of them intermingling all the time. Uh, because South Carolina, that's in Greenville. Is that correct or am I wrong? No, Columbia. Columbia, Columbia that's right. South Carolina's in Columbia. And how far is that from Clemson? From Clemson, it's, oh gosh, I'm going to say uh, less than 100 miles, I think. It's very close. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, well, to a big South Carolina is a small state. It's pretty close to everything. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, – plus, plus, uh, Gotcha. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, now with the 40 teams in the SEC, it's very uh, – it's going to be very competitive. I always think it's kind of funny that, you know, saying them is in on the picture here. They're coming to Knoxville next year. So. Yeah. Uh, I have season tickets to the Vols, and we actually have had we had a little bit of a, a similarity here. Last year, I got season tickets to the Vols, and I sat in section Y six. I think you also uh, had some tickets back then. Our season tickets were in Y six. How about that? So, yeah, you know, once again, Great seats, wonderful seats. It's you know, right by the uh, right by the goalpost. You see when the team runs out onto the field. You know, you're right there in the end zone, yeah. so you get to see all the action. Like, I love them. And what, what a first season it was for me to have season tickets last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So. Definitely. It's, uh, we had season tickets, but I don't have any years. But then, you know, you have children, things change and everything. So, uh, and then with the staying at large, if I want to go to a game, I, I could usually get a ticket from the scalpers. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But now I wouldn't know how to do it since it's done on your phone. So much is done on the phone. Now. Yeah. It's crazy. So Leonard's Losers, though it had a little bit of a hiatus, it's back and better than ever. Now, George, you know, as a big fan of the program, uh, was this something that you were thinking about for a while about like, oh, I'm going to miss the show or 
Uh, was there anybody that actually like took over for Leonard once he was finished with the program? He, when he retired uh, in 94, he had, I think, a nephew that tried it for a year or two, and it, it, it never took off. Right. That, that was the end of it. And, oh, about six or seven years ago, I just started doing, picking three or four games, doing a, a monologue for them like Leonard did, and sending it to my friends. You know, just as fun. For fun. And sending it to guys that I knew listened to Leonard, who were my age, uh, or younger, hopefully. But uh, that list started to grow, and, and two or three years down the road, I had, I was sending out like a hundred emails with Leonard. And I thought, wow. Maybe. <laughs> so I applied. I, I didn't know what steps to take. I knew there was some trademark involved or something. So I hired an attorney who knew what he was doing. And we went through all, jumped through all the hoops. And it, it took 22 months to acquire the trademark. Nearly two years. Yeah, almost two years because you had these waiting periods and everything. Yeah, what, what are the steps like? So you, you hired the attorney. You told them, hey, you know. This is the show that was on before. Did, did he know anything about it, or you had to? No, he was too it? young. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the youngster. The, the, the breaking point's about forty-five. If you're forty-five or older, you've probably heard of later before. If you're forty-five and younger, you have no clue. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. but this guy uh, just had to fill out uh, some paperwork, and, you know, and describe what what the show was like. Uh, just some stuff, but you had to wait to make sure nobody contested it. I knew that, that Leonard died in 2001 and his wife had passed away and he didn't have any children. Gotcha. But, but you still got to, you know, go go by the time frame. And, and nobody ever contested it, my attorney. I finally have the certificate uh, on my wall. Wow. And so that was something that you started in what year to get that trademark? Uh, well, 22 months ago. To, uh, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. Carry the three here, so yeah. Around was it 2019 or 2020 yeah, 20, or 19, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you've had the trademark for how long? Uh, it has to be renewed in five years. So gotcha. Okay, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Wow, how about that? Yeah, that's something that's very interesting. You know, is that something that you think people are doing a lot? You know, just looking at like old programs or you know, it's like identities and seeing you know, hey, it hasn't been used in the while. I'm going to try to reach out and get that. Do you think that's something that's common? Uh, I don't think so. I, I really don't. Uh, there's only there's, the information about Leonard is very limited. I mean, I searched and searched. and I, I've talked to two or three people that knew him personally, which was an interesting story. And who are they? Uh, one guy's sports writer for a uh, uh, a paper in Louisville or Lexington. I'm not sure. I've got I've got his name. And we had a nice conversation, and, and he actually put me on on the air. And he said Leonard used to come up and sponsor a charity golf tournament. And I think it was Louisville. You're a big golf fan. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was a big draw back in that day. You know, people come see Leonard. He won't play in a golf tournament. Well, he said a friend of his who was a uh, member high-ranking member of the Kentucky Southern Baptist Convention got Leonard to come and speak to the convention one year, the Baptist Convention of Kentucky. Okay. And this guy was there and he told me, he said, I've never seen so many red faces in my life and they didn't ask him back. So and that's just one. And another, <laughs> another story goes, I just talked to this guy. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he knew Leonard. Leonard was a representative of some off-brand lager beer and traveled around for his, his other job, you know, where he mm -hmm. stepped out of his Leonard role. And he called on this guy in, in, <laughs> in, in, in uh, South Carolina, no, I, excuse me, North, North Carolina. I have no idea where this, is sto this story is going, well, but. <laughs> the athletic director at the local high school knew this guy knew Leonard and said, would you get him to come and speak at the sports banquet at the end of the high school, you know, school year? Seems fitting. Sure did. <laughs> and this guy told me personally over the phone, he said, he told some of the raunchiest jokes I have ever heard. He said, I was shocked. <laughs> he said, we're talking about 200 students, boys and girls, 
And the athletic director came to him and says, don't, don't ever bring him back. <laughs> so uh, those two firsthand tales, I, I thought, were, were very interesting. That is just glorious. So it seemed like Leonard, you know, he just, he did his thing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was an old Navy veteran, so I'm sure. Very colorful. Very, very colorful. Can't imagine, you know, having a uh, two hundred, you know, school kids here, and he goes up there High talking school. like, yeah, uh, you know, maybe someday I think this guy's going to pick up later. This guy that told me that story is at the Elvis radio station uh, in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and uh, I, I don't get him. See if I can get him to tell me some of the jokes. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> later, oh. So going in on that, George, now, how many years have you been doing and recording? Uh, Leonard, you know, on your website, thelenardslosers.com, and uh, tell us about, you know, how many stations you're on, what you've begun to do, what you're trying to do. This will be the fourth year, 2023. Going on year four. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I had, this this year, I had uh, eight stations, all, all in the South, uh, Kentucky, two in South Carolina, one in Georgia, three in Alabama, one in Tennessee, and one in Mississippi. I think. That's great. So you're really yeah. spread around there. Yeah. So it, it has. And I, I work on this during the off season. I send out correspondence via letters. I, I, I do both. I found, you're speaking, that the letters have been more, people have been more responsive to the letters than they have the email. You can, you can check that real quick if you want. We'll just cut this part out. Uh, where were we here? So, yes, so you're saying the letters are better than actual emails. I found that I've, got, I've got better response. And I think that's so interesting because I, for just myself growing up, right, when emails became a thing, that was like the coolest thing ever. You know, it's oh, like, yeah. oh, we're only going to talk to each other by email. It's more efficient, quicker, blah, 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 which is true. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You type something up, you send it, it's there one second later. And then it's like, oh, snail mail, regular mail is just like, oh, it's just trash. You know, it's just bills or junk, you know, stuff that you don't want. Just, eh. but now I feel as if it's total opposite, you know? Yeah. And I think so many times, and, I, and I'm completely challenged when it comes to computer. It probably goes in spam or junk mail or something. You know, if you got that letter in your hand, and I, I've got a, a a big return address stamp up where it says Leonard's Loser World Headquarters, and my <laughs> address so, World Headquarters. Yeah, so trying yeah. to catch a little, you know, attention there. I, that would certainly catch my attention because yeah. you know what, George, it's just like. Here's the thing, and you know I'm going to be totally honest about this here. Uh, I'm totally going to do a little bit of a reveal here. Uh, when people call my office line, I know that they don't know who I am. Right. They are soliciting me. Unless, of course, it's something where I've planned it accordingly with someone. Say, you're going to call my office line at 1 p.m. on this day. So I know it's them. But most of the time... 99% of the time, the people that are calling my office line don't know me. They're trying to sell me something. They're trying to get me to do something, right? And that is just like way worse when it comes to email. You know, email so easy that you send it out to everybody and anybody that you don't know. You find my email is in some database and, you know, some guy in India or North Carolina or California or Canada, whatever it is, has acquired my email and wants to sell me lotion or you know like some type of like hat for our you know to give away yeah. and stuff. it's like they don't know who i am however you know that just goes into it of like how i get all these emails every single day and all i'm doing is just delete you know it's like i don't know who this is delete 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 but now this is like so weird how this is all coming together um I just got something in the mail yesterday, in the mail, the actual mail. It was a little box about this big. And in there was a little plastic mason jar with chocolates. And the chocolates were 
wrapped like they were little baseballs. And then there was a little card and it said, I look forward to winning you over. And it was uh, like a promotional company yeah. from New Jersey. And it's like, well, you know what? This physically, something in front of me, in my hands is way better than some guy in Canada or California or North Carolina sending me 50 emails bombarding me. Like right. this, this guy actually took the time to send me something in the mail, spent $6.50 for the postage to send me these little chocolates, you know? And it's just like, wow, that's really nice. You know what? I am going to at least, at least contact him and thank him for the, for the gift. Yeah. So like, there you have it. I feel as if right. right what you're saying, the stuff in the mail is way more of a representation of who you are and it gets people thinking. Exactly. About it. So, yeah, you got, you got it in your hands, kind of like show and tell. You know? <laughs> and you know you're saying that you're constantly thinking about Leonard and this is in between you and the baseball season that we have here yeah. of course so yeah um we have games that stretch you know six straight games like six straight days Tuesday through Sunday and then we have like an off week so you think like you're balancing that you know where you're here at the ballpark one week and then the next week maybe you're trying to get these solicitations if you will right right uh, I, I feel like I've been very fortunate. I'm pleased with it. I'd like to have, uh, uh, of course, more stations, but uh, we'll see what comes up, you know, th this year. And and, and I found, uh, and I had no clue, you know, a lot of these stations, a lot of radio stations, dude, they're planning like six months out. Sure. They're, you know, they want their format in writing or in, in, in ink. So uh, you, you, I don't think it's too early to start. I started in January, right after the holidays. I don't blame I, I probably sent out at least 200 letters and probably 75 emails, uh, I'm guessing. So uh, you, you just you just keep going. Every time you get a no, you're getting closer to a yes. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely yes. You're, you're getting the answers. You're getting answers. So uh, let me ask you this. How much planning does it go into each of your programs you know you pick about what like 30 games a week or so yeah during during the, the height of the season like like 30 i only do a monologue on uh maybe 20 and the rest you know uh tennessee will lose to carson Newman. you know just just one, one bullet statement about uh 10 or 12 games so it seems but, like you have to do a lot of research about a I lot do, of teams i do i usually start on saturday uh while the, while the games are going on with next week's schedule and yeah. pick out uh, the, the best games, well, which I think are the best games. And uh, start like that, and I, I've got my computer in front of me where I put my, type in my monologue and print it off, and then I've got my cell phone where I do my research. You know, if I want to know who's the mascot for such and such, or what colors, what's the name of the stadium, they have any nicknames that you know just things like that who's the coach maybe so uh it it, it it takes me uh i'll work some on sunday and usually most of the day monday and tuesday i'll i'll try to wind it up because i have a standing appointment with the radio station in knoxville that i record at one o'clock every wednesday gotcha so you're doing your research on saturdays while you're watching the yeah, court games. sure so how many games do you typically watch like on a Saturday to prepare well, for it? I've so. got my, my, my clicker, my control. <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, even the Saturday night and those West Coast games, she whiz. Right. You know, that's my bedtime. Very late. Yes. Very late. Yes. So. But it's, uh, it, it's enjoyable. It really is. And so you do, you're watching your games on Saturday. You're making your notes uh, during those and then. You're really like hitting the ground running with your writing, I guess, on Monday. Yeah, so. that's usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm usually ready to go with my schedule and get everything. Now, yeah, go ahead. And, and, and you know, you you gotta wait sometimes there on, on, on Saturday or Sunday to get the results. You know, if you had an upset, well, you probably want to refer to that in your monologue for that team the next week. Sure. And who did the upsetting and, and, and things like that. So Saturday, will, will, the hardest week to do is the first week because yeah. you don't have anything to fall back on except last year. You can't say, you know, so-and-so got flogged last week at home or 
it's hard. And matter of fact, I had last year, I thought it was so easy. I had the first week written in mid August. Oh, and I know yeah. I, I distinctly remember you coming in here at about a certain game in uh, Hawaii that didn't work out for you. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us you're about, right. tell us about yeah. that one. Hawaii and, and uh, Vanderbilt. <laughs> Pretty sure you said it was the uh, the lock of the week there. I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't see Vanderbilt going to Hawaii, and I know Hawaii's had some problems. And winning. When you go to Hawaii, you party. And that's typical most of the time. But they went out there and flogged Hawaii. Especially right out of the gate, your first week. First, first week. game. Yeah. You know, oh, we're going to have a ball. We're going to go to Hawaii, you know, have a couple of yeah. drinks and, you know, just have fun in the sun. Beach, we'll surf. Yeah. All that good stuff. But yeah, that one didn't, <laughs> did not work out. <laughs> so I know what, something that I'm sure the fans out here would like to know is how well does Leonard pick the games? Last year, and I, I keep up with it, last year I had a 70, 72% wow. percentage. That is very strong. Yeah. Very yeah. strong. That's just, you know, picking the lose. That's not against the spread. Sure. Uh, if I had 72 against the spread, I'd be in Las Vegas. But uh, <laughs> You wouldn't be sitting here with it's, me. Uh, year before last, I was 71. Uh, so I, I felt pretty good about it. Wow, that's really, really impressive. And I think you, so. You know, you got the, uh, and I'll, I'll pick sometimes an occasional upset. An occasional upset. Yeah. So, and that is a great segue into the next thing I was going to ask you about. So, as we all know, uh, at least if you're from here in Tennessee or you follow, follow college football, the Balls had a fantastic season last year. And the one game that was circled, you know, every single year, no matter what it is, who's, you know, what the records are, what players are on the field, is the UT versus Alabama game. And, you know, this year, the setup was the Vols are at home and they're playing against the Crimson Tide. And the Vols are undefeated. They're both ranked. I think, are they both in the top five at this point? Was I it so. the Vols are five? I and guess it was five. So, like, this is the game of the week. This is the third, third game in the whole season that college game day is covering a UT game. It's like unbelievable. All the hype is around the balls. And, you know, I was at the game. And for those that don't, well, I won't say this. Let's just go ahead and before we before, before we reveal what happened at the game, um, go ahead and tell us what you decided on for the game. What was Who was Leonard's loser for this game? Leonard's loser, Alabama. And that was a big shaking moment, wasn't it? It was. Because the Vols ended up winning that game, and that really put them on the map. And then go ahead and tell us about, you know, the flack that you got for that. Oh, gee, it, it, it was funny. I really enjoyed it. I was on an Alabama tailgate show with, I only did about four games, I think. Of course, Alabama and Tennessee was one of them. At 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, I recorded it Friday. And uh, Mick Gillespie, my good friend. Had, uh, Mick from had, Wild Pitches, of course. Yeah, had uh, put it on. He, he, of course, he's an Alabama grad. You know, he said, "Well, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about." Said, okay. Well, about ten o'clock after that show had aired in Tuscaloosa, yes, with my pick of uh, Alabama losing, I start getting these emails. <laughs> you are crazy. Your little smart build machines run off the track. You're Leonard's losers because you're a loser. Uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 Alabama fans just, ooh. I kept, I didn't reply to him. I just laughed. I just, I Got to keep those, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I kept them. 11 o'clock that night after the game was over, I pulled them up one by one. I said four words. I said close, but no cigar. And uh, there was no more emails out of Tuscaloosa. And tell the fans the the meaning behind that as well behind well, the yeah, close that, but no cigar they so. have the, the the tradition in Alabama of lighting cigars after a victory everybody's got a cigar the women so that was the uh, meaning behind that no cigar my friend and where did you watch that balls game against Bama was that in the comfort of your own home yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was at home and what a contest that was 
back and forth, like adrenaline pumping. And I was there, I was in Y6, yeah. you know, and that place was just on fire the whole game. So the Vols took the lead, uh, took a pretty good lead early, 21 to 7 in the first quarter. They relinquished it. And then after that, it was a slugfest. Take me through your thoughts on that game. Oh, gee. A roller coaster. Mm -hmm. An absolute roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, head behind, head behind. It was just, you know, you just felt like the, the, the team that scored last was going to win. I mean, you know. And that's what happened. That's what happened. So, and you did jump out on the field, didn't you? So Absolutely. I, I saw you. Yeah. I yeah. saw you. I, I was the guy that was naked. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they didn't catch me, though. Too quick. I covered my body in olive oil. Olive oil. So. That's good. That's yeah. a good lubricant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Uh, what a time. What a time for that and for the balls. And it just felt good to be around, you know, the success. You yeah. Know? It's always fun. You know, you can say the same thing about. Smokey's baseball, whatever that you follow, where, yeah, it's fun coming to the game, you're hanging out with your friends, your family, you know, it's camaraderie of the community, but it's almost so, it's always so much better when you're winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And what are your thoughts on the Vols' upcoming season here? Hendon Hooker, of course, uh, you know, he's going to be in the NFL draft coming up, you yeah. know, just a few days from the recording of this show, uh, recovering from his injury. But now we have Joe Milton at the helm leading the troops. What do you think about that? Milton uh, has always impressed me with his arm. Sometimes it's a little too strong. But I, I really think he's, he's he's calmed down a little bit as far as uh, his inaccuracy. Uh, you know, he, he would overthrow some receivers. It, it shouldn't have happened. But uh, I, I think he's uh, matured. Uh, I, think he'll, I think he'll do a good job. And, of course, this kid out of California, Nico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got a, a phone call from a guy who's a, he's a sports writer in L.A., a friend of mine. Used to work at Smokies. Yeah. Anyway, he's out there. And he, he called me back during football season. He said, I'm sending you one. I said, what are you talking about? He said, this kid, he'd go, Lama, what is it, Lama Leah? I don't remember. Yeah, anyway. You're the, you're the expert. You're a runner. He said, he said that he had talked to two of his coaches – two opposing coaches, and I think he said three of those coaches told him that if he stayed at Tennessee, he would win the Heisman Trophy. Now, that's pretty strong. That's quite a statement. And I saw, watched some of those uh, videos from the Orange and White game. Kids, phenomenal for a freshman. That's exciting times. Yeah, it is. But I, I, I think Milton will do, uh, will, will do fine. I really do. And I, you know, I think they're going to have to have a good ball club. There's no doubt about it. So, looking, looking forward to it. Of course, I want to enjoy baseball season while it's here. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have currently, you know, the view of the ballpark right in front of us. And, you know, the Smokies are currently in first place. Yeah. In the, uh, in the division. And they have the best home record. In all the league right now. Oh, really? Yep. Six and three right well, now. I so. mean, we took that series from Chattanooga four to two. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And that was some exciting baseball. What a what a variety of you know endings and finishes we had there. Yeah. So we had a walk off, right? Right. And uh, we had a strong seven to one performance with four home runs in there. Yeah. Had that game where we lost eleven nothing. We won't talk about that. You know, it's baseball, right? It's baseball. <laughs> and then following up the next day with a another strong outing, uh, one nine to five, and that's just baseball. How baseball is, it you is. Know? So you never know. You know, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna. They don't say win some, lose some, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's exciting to watch. It really is. Have you been keeping up with the majors at all? Uh not much. Mm -hmm. I really have. Too early. Same here. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> Same here. So it's a long season, especially in the majors where, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, of course, you got to get some, uh, you got to get some wins in the win column right now. Oh, but yeah. It's all about once you get closer to October and the winter months. Oh, yeah. Seeing, what, you know. Who, who started that? Who was it started out with, what, 13, 14 wins? Uh, the Tampa, Tampa Bay Rays. Bay. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting thing because the Rays have actually been really good. For a number of years now, but they, they just have. cannot get over that hump. So, 
because it's like these these teams that are more storied that are making it through and making it to the championship. Now, I mean, the definition of the story, the New York Yankees haven't been able to do that recently. Last yeah. time they won the World Series, at least made it to the World Series, was 09. Yeah, it's been a while. So why do you think that is? Long drive spell. I, I, I don't know. I really don't. And I'm, I'm confess, I've been a Yankee fan since I was six years old. Sure. Uh, you know, and I was there during the heyday uh, of, of Yankee baseball. But I, it just, I don't know. You said Tampa Bay could get over the hump. I don't think the Yankees. Right. Have right. gotten to the hump yet. And, you know, you can, you say arguably the most exciting player on the baseball field is Aaron Judge, that mammoth of a man. Yeah. You know, uh, going for the record last season with the home runs and all. So uh, it's weird, weird to think about how the Yankees have not been, you know, uh, successful recently. So winning the games in the regular season, that's all and well. But, yeah, George, let me, let me ask you about this. You know, you growing up watching baseball, not many teams made the playoffs. It really meant something when you were in the postseason. Isn't exactly. that right? Exactly. So Exactly. That number we yeah, was diminished greatly, yeah. So you didn't have what, eight, ten. Ever have any goes to the playoff now? Yeah, it just didn't happen. Yeah, you know, it's like winning the pennant was something that you had to do starting in April. Yep. You know, you had to get all those wins to make it into the playoffs. And now it just seems like eh, as long as you do all right, a little above average, you're, yeah. you have a chance at the you championship. Have a chance of getting in there, yeah. But it's going to be. Uh, It'll, it'll be interesting to see as it gets down you know, closer to football season. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to get a better idea of your teams that are going to be contending for for World Series berth. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, that's that's always exciting when you know you got baseball, and you got football, you got baseball, and you got football. I mean, gee, it is. It's the best time when it's both. Yeah. So it is definitely. You know, something to look forward to. I mean, I love the spring and the summertime. I love the weather, you know, shorts and flip-flops and all. People are out having fun, you know, outside of sports. But when the leaves begin to change, start to fall, then you know that it's that about that time. I'm a so. fall person. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my favorite. And I, I know it won't be long until Santa Claus comes. <laughs> so. And, George? You do uh, a little bit of a Santa Claus thing here and there. At least you used to back in the day. I do, yeah. I've cut back here my old, old, olden years here, my golden years, I guess. And they are so golden that you're spending them with me. But they, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I used to do uh, a whole lot more than I do now. I only had four gigs, I think, this past. Uh, but I've got some nice tales, which I won't tell on a podcast. But Fair enough. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just keep those between Santa and his elves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand that. Well, you know, uh, Christmas in July is coming to Smokey Stadium I know. this year. So, I know. it won't be you, George. You'll be Santa. I've got, uh, I haven't taken my uniform or my suit to the cleaners. I usually take it to store it in January, but it's still in my closet. Mm -hmm. But I've got some other uh, paraphernalia. Save the neck for me, that t shirt <laughs> that you gave me. <laughs> the classic. From... My wife went over. She said, You want to take that, ever take that shirt off? I said, Well, maybe New Year's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, George, you know, thank you so much once again for going yardly with us today and wild pitches. You know, anything else you want to say to the fans? Any predictions for the upcoming baseball or college football season? You know, as of this podcast, it's April 25th. You know, but we'll we'll be impressed nonetheless if you have something to say. Well, I think the jury's still out on this pitch clock deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's taking a lot of adjusting. Uh, it's still out with me. Uh, I'm not a fan right now, but that could change. But uh, and it's I don't know. I think in, in AAA, aren't they using the electronic strike zone? There are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about that. I'm old school. That, that just, you know, it's, it's, it takes an element out of the game. You know? Yeah. It's not baseball. But we'll see. Robo umps. Yeah. What's next? Robo players. Could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. We'll see. All right, George. Thank you so much again for joining us here today on Wild Pitches. And, of course, uh, hit us up one more time with uh, how can you find Leonard's Losers? I have a website. 
matter of fact, the last two or three seasons are on there week by week. It's just the T H E Leonard's L E O N A R D S Losers L O S E R S dot com. The Leonard's Losers dot com. The Leonard's Losers dot com. Find out who's going to win, who's going to lose those college football games that you love and breathe over the weekend. It's usually on, usually posted by Wednesday afternoon or mid C evening for the Saturday games. Of course, you got, you know, the season opens, you've got some Thursday games, some Friday games, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It goes all the way through the way oh, yeah. the weekend. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of hard, you know, those Thursday and Friday. Uh, but Tennessee plays on Friday. Right, uh, right. So I've got to get them, you know, on there. All right. Thank you again, George, for joining us here today. Better look out for more podcasts uh, that we have coming up. We are hot and heavy, and we love talking to you guys. See you next time.